Okay, so are we ready to get going, Stan? Going. Let's get going, on. Okay, great. Well, listen, first of all, I want to thank everyone for joining this historic first phone call of OIC of America and the OIC uh, 10 initiative, the Entrepreneurial Mindset Initiative. Uh, a little housekeeping, to mute your phone, it will be star six. Star six will mute your phone, or you can use your manual uh, mute settings on your own phones. But in the event you're somewhere, you've got background noise, we want to let you know you can mute your phone by pressing star six, and then to unmute yourself is the same star six. With that being said, I want to uh, introduce a number of people you're going to be hearing from this evening. Uh, we've heard a little from already the chairman, uh, Art Taylor. You're also going to hear from the president and CEO of OIC of America, Howard Sullivan. We're going to hear from the national director of the Entrepreneurial Mindset Initiative, Stanley Green. And we're also going to hear from the uh, communications Communications and Development Senior Associate, Deb Scotty Scott. So we've got a lot of great information coming your way. Again, I want to thank everyone for joining this historic call tonight. Uh, it's going to be a weekly call for the Entrepreneurial Mindset Initiative. And these are the champions that are on this call. All of us that are here are champions and about to continue to make history as OIC has done and will continue to do. And so without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to the uh, chairman, uh, Art Taylor, and he will also then be bringing on Howard Sullivan. Art? Okay. Good, good evening, everyone. Uh, good evening. As, as you may have heard me say, I just left a three-hour tour of uh, some of the most high, high, highly uh, crimed uh, areas of Boston and um, had an opportunity to visit with some young men who were involved heavily in the gang uh, uh, activity up here, and uh, um, I've, I'm seeing firsthand how desperately uh, they need what we're trying to do in Philadelphia and on a nationwide basis. Uh, these are young men who have been incarcerated. They want to work. They, no one's hiring them. And they understand that, and they understand what they've done in the past and how that's affecting their lives. But nonetheless, they're hungry for some kind of opportunity uh, to do some things. And, and when I talk to them about uh, my interest in encouraging entrepreneurship, you should have seen the hands fly up, how they were talking, well, I want to start a, a, a vending machine business, one guy said. Another guy said, I want to start a business that would allow me to um, um, sell t-shirts. Another guy said, you know, I want to try a business that would allow me to to maybe cut hair someday. Um, Mark is 12. Okay. And so, you know, the, the interest is there. They don't have an, an idea yet how to make it happen. But there's, it, it's telling me that there's so many people who are so ready just to be pushed over the edge into that direction that this initiative is the right one. The Entrepreneurial Mindset Initiative is going to change this nation. I really believe that because the time is so right for it. Um, we're in a situation in our economy where uh, people understand that they can't make it with just a job where people understand that the flexibility in their the flexibility in their lives is going to be dependent not only on what kind of job they can get but how they can develop businesses of their own and uh, there are young men now who have been a part of uh, a bad life experience from the time they were 12 or 13 years old who realize that they've got to change their lives but they need something. They need a beacon mm. out there that they can grab onto and say, this is how to do it. And it's going to be the entrepreneurial mindset, I think, will be one of the most important initiatives that will come to this nation, I believe, in the next few years to make that happen. And so um, what we've got to do, and Stanley will be talking about this later on, 
What we've got to do is continue to spread the word about entrepreneurship in the black community. Mm. We've got to get people to sign on to the pledge. We've got to get people to text their $10. We've got to get in the media. We've got to get people to, to allow us to talk on their radio shows, on their TV shows. We've got to be on the social media. We've got to be Facebooking and Twittering and doing everything humanly possible to get the word out that it's not just about a job, as good as that is, but it's also about encouraging entrepreneurship in our communities. Because if they do that, they're going to get ed they're going to seek more education so they can be successful. Yeah. They're going to avoid getting into trouble because they can't get in, they can't be successful if they're in trouble. All of the things they're going to have better connections with their families because. And they're, so their kids are going to see them doing this. So there's so many advantages that will come from this. It's going to change America. And the group that needs people ask me, well, why is it that you're focusing on black people? It's not that, it's, that we're trying to discriminate against anybody. It's that in the black community, we haven't taken on entrepreneurship to the same extent as other communities. That's why. And therefore, the biggest gains that can be made in America will be from the black community. And so don't let anybody say that we're trying to discriminate. What we're trying to do is fix an intractable problem through the entrepreneurial mindset initiatives by focusing on African Americans. So I'm going to stop talking, but you're going to hear me preaching like this every time we get on this call because next time I want more people, I want more calls, I want to hear, all, I want to hear more about people talking about entrepreneurial uh, mindsets and I want to hear about people texting or giving us $10 so we can endow this thing and make it work. Amen. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Art. And um, we're going to hear from Howard Sullivan. I just want to let people know that just joined the call. You can mute your background noise by pressing star six, or you can use your uh, mute service on your, on your phone. Um, at this point, I believe we're going to go to uh, Howard Sullivan. Howard? Yes. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. OIC of America is the organization which is going to uh, run this entrepreneurial mindset initiative. OICA has been around for almost 50 years. It was born in Philadelphia by my father, the Reverend Leon Sullivan, and it is a it is a organization that and a movement that grew out of uh, protest against uh, lack of opportunities for for people uh, in jobs in Philadelphia, and it actually has uh, OIC has spread across the country uh, in different centers. We now have 44 centers around the country, and each center is doing something uh, to help people uh, learn skills, to help people with social services, and to uh, improve their lives. It's born out of the self-help movement. The self-help movement was, was started by my father, and uh, under that, people are learning to help themselves, we are giving people a hand up, not a hand out. So this, this, this initiative was seen many years ago by my father. If you look at his book that he wrote, Build by the Build, he talks about entrepreneurship, he talks about um, people starting businesses, not just getting jobs, but people starting businesses. So I encourage you to find the, the brother, Bill Brother Bill book and look at what uh, was envisioned by my father 40 years, 45 years ago. And with that, I'm going to turn back over to Norm. Thank you, Howard, and uh, we really appreciate that. And Build Brother Build, excellent, excellent book, and uh, definitely highly recommend it. At this point, we're going to uh, continue, and we're going to go to uh, Deb Scott, Scotty Scott, who is going to, who's going to share with us uh, an interview. She is the Communications and Development Senior Associate for OIC of America. Scotty? Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening. And good evening. 
Mr. Hicks. I have not heard Mr. Hicks yet. Is he on the line? Well, yeah, I guess we don't, he's not here, yeah. We, do, we don't have him yet, unfortunately. Uh, Mr. Russell Hicks uh, was scheduled to be our guest entrepreneur this evening, and this is what can happen when you are an entrepreneur. Your schedule might not always be your own. But he is uh, with someone who was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois, and transplanted now to Philadelphia as a graduate of Howard University. But he is the perfect example of the type of individual we would hope that the entrepreneurial mindset would help to create. He is currently a, um, he teaches social entrepreneurship to adjudicated youth at the E3 Center here in Philadelphia. And he has several different businesses. I have been looking at his website, reading up on him, and he's, he is quite the entrepreneur. Um, he's the founder and head designer of Ebony Sons Fashion. He is um, the project director for the Great, I'm sorry, the Project Great Potential Program at the Enterprise Center here in West Philadelphia, which teaches entrepreneurship uh, to young adult males of color between the ages of 18 and 25. He also runs a travel website which you can check out at www.ebonysons.worldventures.biz. But he has, he's involved in performing art. His resume is really something to see. And um, I'm sorry that he's not on the line because we were hoping to ask him specifically what was it that motivated him to become an entrepreneur and why with his uh, degree in business administration from Howard University, he decided to sort of leave the traditional work world and jump out on his own. And one of the things we hope each week will be able to do is have a different entrepreneur on. And one of the things that we, uh, additional things that we also want to hear from them is what hurdles they encountered in becoming an entrepreneur and starting their own businesses in addition to sharing with the group what they felt the most the bigger benefits of being their own boss were to them that made them want to leave what we might refer to as the traditional nine to five job. And hopefully he'll be able to join us before the call is over. So Norm, I guess I'll turn it back to you, or better yet, to Stan. Great. Well, I'll pick it up. And, um, and, and Art, did you want to talk a little bit about the, some of the the essence um, of the uh, entrepreneurial mindset initiative, and then I'll talk about how how we we fund this. Um, make Great. Case in terms of the statistics and so forth. Okay. Well, the the, the basic concept is that if you look at uh, the African American community right now, um, we are underrepresented by far when it comes to business ownership. And as a result of that, and not only as a result of that, but, but also as a result of that, um, we, are, um, we are double the unemployment rate of, of the um, um, Caucasian population in this country, at least double. And um, so we have to find a way to close those gaps. And you can't do it unless you mix in entrepreneurship. So the question then becomes, well, there are lots of programs out there that help people who want to start businesses. Uh, the government has programs. The SBA has programs. Uh, colleges and universities have programs that reach into communities. Community-based organizations have programs. Lots of programs that help people who want to start businesses. There are even some funding programs out there that will give people the resources, although we can debate how effective they are. But there are ways for people now even to get, for people who don't have a lot of capital, you can start multi-level marketing businesses with very little capital if you're so inclined. And if you want to work hard, you can even make that successful. What we find with all of that, in America still not starting businesses at the same rate as other populations. 
I believe it's because we don't have the same mindset when it comes to starting business as other groups. That is, starting business is certainly not our first option uh, when we leave school. Um, if we don't leave school, it's, it's probably not an option at all that we would ever go out and start a business. But yet, other groups come in who uh, maybe lack all of the, the educational requirements that they have, but they still start businesses. Um, we see that among almost every other ethnic group. They're out there starting businesses. Why aren't we? I think it's because we don't believe we can succeed. You have to begin to have the mindset that says, you know what, we can start our own businesses. And a failed business is not a failed life. It is only a learning experience. And so we've got to begin to put the principles out there that people can succeed in business. And um, and that's what this mindset initiative is, is aimed to do. And it's aimed to do it in a broad way. We want to encourage, we want to reach a million people with this message and move a million people, hopefully, uh, to start their own business. And um, so if you think about how we're going to, and Stanley talk about a bit about how we're raising money to do this. And um, as we raise money, we're also raising the awareness. We're also um, seeding the campaign to encourage entrepreneurship. And as we do this, we're going to find that opportunities that we never envisioned would come out of this because of the awareness and because of the groundswell of people that are going to be uh, behind what we're doing because of how we're going about raising money. Millions of people in this country will get behind this and we will change America. I'm telling you, this initiative as it will change America, I believe. So I think that's what you wanted me to say, Stan. Um, but um, if I haven't covered everything you want me to cover, I'll be happy to talk some more. But I think we should talk about the fundraiser. Let me also jump in real quick. I think we may have Russell Hicks on the line. Russell, are you on the line? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Scotty, I know you, Russell uh, joined, has joined us. I know we're going to go to Stanley, but uh, I know, Scotty, you had some questions. I don't know if you want to ask a couple of those questions since Russell was able to join us, and then we can go following him to Stanley Green. Okay. Well, okay, thanks for, jo for joining us, uh, Russell. Yes, yes. Good Thank evening, you. Mr. Hicks, and we're glad you could make it. Um, uh, I gave already sort of a brief bio of your background and have been looking at all of the businesses that you're involved in. But one of the things I'd like to uh, help the group with is what was it that you were doing before you started your own businesses? Yes, well, I, uh, ten, year, ten years, uh, I worked previously at the Enterprise Center, which is a business development center for people of color. Uh, I served there uh, various capacities, all except the president's office, but financial management, where I dealt with uh, cash flow on a daily basis, um, working with our vendors and and really, um, you know, budgeting and managing the finances. Being a hundred, uh, a million point five budget, uh, went into building operations, and then kind of sunk my teeth into programming, uh, where uh, the last four years had the opportunity to develop my own social entrepreneurship program for young men, called Project Great Potential. Uh, young men ages 18 to 25, we graduated 300 young men out of that program. Uh, between 2006 and 2009. Uh, we ran eight-week um, cycles where we met, met twice a week. Um, Wednesdays were more uh, personal development around shaping the mindset and changing kind of the mindset and behaviors, but really engaging them into um, to, uh, career development, having them think about their future. So on uh, a lot of visioning, on uh, a lot of uh, history, uh, so we use the, the Sankofa principle kind of, you know, starting out, kind of looking at the past and giving them examples of kings and queens and all the uh, inventors and, and, and great black leaders, um, you know, in America and, and, and uh, around the diaspora. 
but then, you know, really engage that, that business piece on Saturdays and develop business plans. They develop five-year goals and really got a good foundation for entrepreneurship. Uh, some of the intangibles were the shift in mindset and the belief that you can do it because uh, where, there's a, where there is a will, there is a way. So um, you got guys right off, um, you know, the block, and, you know, they have the hustle, but then, you know, in terms of polishing that with principles around business, uh, they're excelling. I actually have one of my entrepreneurs on uh, as a success story with me now. Uh, his name is John McKay, and he has um, created a program called Life Outside of the Streets, where he's using hip-hop and music um, to impact youth. So the goal is to is to each one teach one uh, in terms of mentorship, ownership, and um, and really giving them a sense of um, belief, but capitalizing off of that belief and and uh, creating a means for for enterprise. What do you think is the? Um, I want to give you these two parts of this question so we can uh, continue to move ahead. But what do you believe to be the primary hurdle for anyone looking to start their own business? And what do you feel is the most substantial benefit of becoming an entrepreneur? Well, other than the getting beyond the belief piece, believing in yourself and the mindset, kind of having uh, that the tangibles, uh, the more core um, you know, business pieces is around finance, of course, um, but even before that, uh, strategic planning, putting the plan together. I think uh, entrepreneurs traditionally have just went into it, uh, bumped their head, made mistakes, which is great. Uh, you, you learn from that, but to minimize some of those learning lessons, strategic planning is, is really valuable uh, for entrepreneurs. So creating that business plan, getting the paperwork done in terms of working on the business, but also working in the business uh, in terms of making sure that you are doing proper bookkeeping um, in terms of finance so you can position yourself for growth. So that's a challenge in terms of having all the ducks lined up in the room in terms of paperwork and having good accounting practices. Uh, the other piece is finding a good team is human resources. I think um, you know people are the biggest resource a uh, business can have in terms of leverage and, and opportunities with, uh, in terms of your customers and your employees. But uh, your team uh, is, is the piece that's going to help you uh, grow, uh, whether that be locally, regionally, nationally, and globally. So, uh, yeah, dealing with those challenges up front and identifying those people and getting those basic, um, you know, bookkeeping principles down, I think, is key. Okay. And, and what do you feel is the benefit for someone, um, the, the most substantial benefit of someone starting their own business? Uh, f purpose and passion, and, and, and that's that's freedom. Uh, I think, um, you know, we've been kind of uh, in the state of oppression, I guess, mentally, physically, and and spiritually, but um, you know, to pull yourself out of that in, in terms of freedom and, and financial freedom, I believe, is the final frontier, particularly for people of color in America and globally. So, um, you know, really kind of taking that and then uh, and leveraging that to, to global uh, growth because it, it's a global economy. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Hicks, for joining us. We appreciate your comments very much. Um, Norm. Okay, great. You we're going to move right into the uh, National Director of the Entrepreneurial Mindset Initiative, Mr. Stanley Green. And as he comes by unmuting his phone by pressing star Maybe six. Star six. <laughs> <All right. laughs> there he is. Thank you very much, Norm and, and, and Scotty. Great interview. And, and Russell, thank you for, for joining us and, and sharing those insights with us. You know, really appreciate it. And thanks, everyone. Um, I call you our, our champions. Uh, we probably have no, no more than uh, outside of our, our initial um, uh, OIC team. Uh, probably about uh, five to ten, but uh, the expectation is we get started today, and then we just build. We we want you to bring ten people, and those people bring ten people in subsequent calls. This is our first one, and uh, we're very pleased that uh, we're getting started. And that's what this is all about. It's about taking action. It's about getting started.
about it. Now, what we want to do with the, this entrepreneurial mindset initiative, where we uh, actually go out and, and, and do the training and, and help folks understand, you know, how to become entrepreneurs, you know, a million people across the nation, uh, is that we want to fund this uh, first. We, we want to make sure that uh, we don't do this the way things are typically done um, with organizations where you get enough money to, to last you for about a year, uh, two years of, of programming and uh, training, and then you run out of money and you have to get more. And if, if there are budget cuts, then you, your programs are cut. We don't want that anymore. We want to make sure that this is what's called endowed, meaning that the, there's going to be enough money where the interest on the money is used to fund the program. So that our goal is a bold goal. Uh, it is to raise a hundred million dollars. And I wouldn't think it's, uh, I probably wouldn't think it's possible if I haven't seen it. I've, I've run cable TV systems and, and uh, programming networks, uh, TV networks for, you know, a major philanthropist who was a multi-billionaire and I've seen him give away $20 million and $30 million at a pop to help um, organizations that are nowhere near uh, what OIC is all about. So you know, I believe we can, we, can, we can raise $100 million because I've seen it done. Uh, I've been involved in operations where tens of millions of dollars have come in in investment you know, to, uh, to fund those operations. But the way we're going to do this is, um, is in two parts. First, we expect to raise $10 million uh, the old-fashioned way, the way Reverend Sullivan used to do it, just $10 at a time. Uh, we will do one time, we expect each person to do a one-time $10 donation, at least a $10 donation. You can do more if you'd like. Uh, and we expect to get a million of them over time, you know, throughout the country, which would give us $10 million. We would then leverage that to go to the Bill Gateses and the Warren Buffetts and the multi-billionaires of the world and ask them, Hey, can you match this? We just raised ten. Will you match that ten? And if we get nine others, nine of them, to uh, to match the ten, we'd have a hundred million dollars. Now, what would happen is, let's assume that the hundred million dollars uh, can uh, generate uh, just three percent interest. What's three percent of a hundred million? That's three million dollars. So, the three million dollars, we would use that to fund the program, and we would never have to touch the one hundred million dollars. We would use that forever now, uh, or it can be funded forever. I'll give you an example. Now, these are some big numbers, so just bear with me. But many of you may not be aware of this. Harvard University, you know, just goes back. They, even though they generate a lot of money from their high tuitions, they have, they always, they're always begging people for money. Uh, their alums come back, donate, donate, and over the years. They built up a $25 billion, that's with a B, a $25 billion endowment. So with a $25 billion endowment, if they were just generating 1% interest and just using that income from the $25 billion, how much would it be? It would be $250 million a year, just 1%. At 2%, $500 million. At 3%, just 3%, interest on the $25 billion, $750 million a year. This is going on as we speak. That's the kind of cash that's coming into Harvard, you know, without a single tuition. These are concepts that are totally foreign to our community. But this is going on around you all the time, but it's just not where you live. Uh, and and uh, this is the kind of, con these are the concepts that we have to, to grasp. And, and what we also have to recognize is that nobody's going to give it to us. We have to begin to pull it ourselves. And how much do we spend uh, as a community throughout the nation? We spend now $900 billion. So if our spending collectively is, is, is $900 billion, then we shouldn't cry about what, what uh, people are not giving us to do something. We should be able, like Reverend Sullivan did uh, decades ago, should be able to do it ourselves. So the $10 million will be raised $10 at a time, and we're using 21st century techniques to, to do this. All you have to do is use your cell, your, 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 your cell phone, and as, as opposed to texting just, hey, hello to your significant other, or where are you, text OIC to this number, and you can write it down, 41010. So as opposed to a regular phone number, 
you would simply you know set it up so that you're dialing uh, or you're punching in 41010 that's the number you want to send a message to the message we want you to put in is OIC so you want to text the letters OIC to the number 41010 text OIC to 41010 it's that simple and if we do that 1 million people around the country do that um, then we would generate $10 million. We would then leverage that to generate the other uh, uh, um, $90 million. Now, uh, is it possible? Yes. Is it is it going to be a challenge? Of course it is. But we're starting person by person, and it's good, and that's the way it's going to be. You telling your you know family members, telling friends about this, and telling them to check the website www oicofamerica.org to get more information and then text uh, OIC to the number 41010. It becomes that simple. So we need you to do three things. Text that $10 donation. Uh, give us your name, your email address, and your telephone number and you can email that to me at sgreen, G-R-E-E-N-E S -E -E, in Stanley, G-R-E-E-N-E -E -E, at OIC of america.org because we just need your name your email address telephone number so we can stay in touch with you we want to build a campaign we want to build a movement if president obama can raise 50 100 million dollars through small amounts of money if reverend sullivan back in the mid 60s with small amounts of money you know can be in, own a shopping center the first black shopping center in the country then we can do this because we're going to have to learn how to pool our capital if we're going to succeed going forward. And so it's one thing to say we want to do an Entrepreneur Mindset Initiative, a major, major training program, uh, but it's another to be able to have the dollars that would fund it forever, and each person can participate uh, to make that happen. So after you, you do the one thing, your $10 donation, your, give us your name, your email address, telephone number, Bring 10 people to the next call. We will be here every Thursday, and we may expand, you know, a couple of times a week and maybe daily ultimately, but right now, once a week, next Thursday, 9 p.m., uh, please invite, uh, you know, someone to, uh, to join you. We'll invite 10 people uh, to, uh, to join you. So at this point, uh, remember, uh, write this down, text OIC to 41010. I'd like to turn it over to Art, uh, who may call out some of the names who've already donated their $10. All right. Well, one of the key people we know, Stanley, is the mayor of Philadelphia. Right. At our press conference, the mayor stood up with his cell phone and proudly texted OIC his $10. And, of course, uh, at this point, there have been many others. Um, but I, what I wanted to uh, add to what Stanley said is simply that in addition to your support in the way Stanley mentioned, if you have other ideas for how we can reach people, let us know. And we'll try to figure out if we can make those ideas work. So uh, We don't propose to have the answers for how to reach everybody. Uh, some of you may have other ideas for how we can reach different uh, segments of our community and get them involved. So uh, please give us your ideas. We want them and we want to try to act on them to the best that we can, or better yet, you act on them, and you get them, uh, those folk to, uh, to participate. We are interested in speaking locally, nationally, and internationally if necessary. We'll go to meetings, we'll go to churches, we'll go wherever we need to go to get this message out. Um, we're fortunate to have a judge on the line with us. Uh, I know uh, uh, that uh, people who are struggling with this are people who have been a part of the, uh, the criminal justice system. Those are the people who we're hoping to reach with this initiative someday. And so if, if there are others um, who can help us, like the judge, we want to hear from you. So uh, please uh, give us your, your thoughts and your ideas. All right. Okay. We email that again uh, to sgreen uh, at oicofamerica.org. Uh, the line's probably going to cut off in another three minutes. So, Norm, do you want to close out? Yeah, real quick, um, again, just want to thank everyone. And, again, make a note of Facebook.com. You can go to Facebook.com slash OIC of America. You can also go to YouTube.com to see some of the videos, including seeing the mayor 
of Philadelphia. That would be youtube.com forward slash OIC America, just OIC America, uh, facebook.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash OIC America. And, of course, our main website is www.oicofamerica.org, oicofamerica.org. You can text OIC to 41010 now. And as was mentioned, uh, Stanley Green, you can email him directly, S Green with an E, S-G-R-E-E-N-E at oicofamerica.org. Three things, the $10 donation, uh, that's a one-time $10 donation we're asking for, your name, email address, and telephone number, and bringing 10 people to the next call and helping to make this viral. Uh, if you look at Bill, Brother Bill, then... One of the things Reverend Sullivan said was our ultimate aim is to become involved in the full circle of national and international economics and affairs, and that's what this is about. So I want to thank everyone um, for joining us, and uh, we will see you all next Thursday at 9 p.m.